What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate. Welcome back to my channel. We are done with the month of September, the first month of the college football season is in the books. This is where things start to get really interesting. It's October football. There's going to be a lot of craziness that happens, and this is a huge week in college football. I'm here today to give you my week five predictions. As usual, I'm going to go through my personal 10 most exciting and most impactful games to the playoff race. Um, and they're, they're going to, or to the playoff race, just interesting games, things like that. There are a lot of games you could have put on this list. Um, a couple that aren't that I'll predict right now, Ohio State Rutgers. I'll take the Buckeyes. I think their defense plays better than it has, although still not quite up to par, but Ohio State does enough. Clemson, Boston College. I think Clemson ruins Boston College's undefeated season. And then Stanford at Oregon. I think Oregon survives an upset bid. Um, but there are a lot of other games. You're going to see a lot of other great games this week. You're going to see a lot of other upset bids. This week is going to be crazy and a lot of fun to watch. So if you guys are excited for this week, you're excited to watch the rest of the season, and you like me as a content creator, you like my content, want to support my channel, please hit the subscribe button. You can also leave a like, comment, share, uh, do anything like that. Help support the channel. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into my prediction. Sorry, I had a hair in my mouth full flow in there. All right. We're going to start with a Friday game here. So Iowa and Maryland are going to clash in the undefeated battle of Big Ten opponents. As per usual, all times are in Eastern Standard Time, and all lines and odds are as of recording this video. So Iowa and Maryland are going to clash in the undefeated battle of Big Ten opponents. Iowa's the three-point favorite. 47.5 is the over-under. Iowa, of course, the fifth-ranked team in the nation, have looked really good up to, the, up to this point. But to that second bullet point there, as usual, I'll give you three things to watch for. Um, what I'm looking for in this game, um, the Hawkeye offense. I'm looking for this Hawkeye offense to get better um, because in recent weeks or just all around throughout the season, um, Iowa has not had a great offense. Um, their defense has been fantastic, yes, but the offense, that's kind of been lacking, right? Um, I, I just want to see more from this Iowa offense especially when you look at my first bullet point there. This Hawkeye defense has been tremendous, as I just mentioned, but this Terrapin offense has as well. And they've been much more consistent than in years past and have a quarterback to prove it in Talia Tungavailoa. Um, also, watch the running back battle. Tyler Goodson and Tayon Fleet Davis are two of the better running backs in the Big Ten, and they're going to go head-to-head. -head. Whichever back has more rushing yards probably is going to help their team out a lot more to win this game. I really do think this one is going to be close. This one's going to be close throughout, and it's going to be a battle. Um, it, it's going to be a nice, like, way back and forth of offense, defense. This is going to be a classic, grind-it-out, hard-fought Big Ten game. And, guys, I got to be honest with you here. My gut is telling me to go with the upset on this one. So I am picking Maryland to beat Iowa 28-24 is my final score prediction. I just think that Maryland, with their offense, is going to be able to get it done against Iowa. I don't know that Iowa's offense can keep up. I haven't really seen any sort of signs that Iowa's offense can keep up. Um, the, the talent is there for Iowa. I just haven't seen it play out yet. This defense is amazing for the Hawkeyes, but they haven't seen an offense quite like this. I know they played Indiana, Iowa State, yes, but those offensive offenses have not been up to par yet. And it's a Friday game. It's a short week, plus the travel day, probably only a couple uh, days of practice for Iowa, well, th throughout the week, right? So practice up through Wednesday, maybe a Thursday morning practice. Then you travel um, on Thursday. You get set up on Friday. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it's a short week. Highly ranked teams lose a lot in this scenario, and I think that's what's going to happen this week. I do think Maryland pulls off a shocking upset here against the number five ranked team in the nation. Speaking of top 10 teams, Arkansas is going to get a huge test as they travel to Athens to battle Georgia. Got a good test last week against Texas A&M, but a lot of interesting games are coming up for the Arkansas Razorbacks. We move now to games played on Saturday. This one is the noon game on ESPN, also the site of College Game Day uh, as the biggest game of the week. And I definitely think this is the biggest game of the week, although the line would not tell you that. 18 and a half um, is the line. Um, in which Georgia is favored by, and the over and under only 48 and a half. So they expect this to be a pretty low scoring game that Georgia dominates. And I don't think that's what's going to happen at all. 
but the battle in the trenches is going to be epic when you look at Arkansas's offense and Georgia's defense. Arkansas is the best team in the SEC at running the football, while Georgia is the best defense in the SEC at, again, stopping the run. So very interesting storylines here for both of these teams because who's going to win the battle in the trenches? That is going to be a key thing to watch for. Also watch for this connection all day. Um, KJ Jefferson is going to have to play a really good game. That saying he starts, he probably will start. Um, no, he was a little hobbled last week at Texas a but if he comes on, he's going to hit Traylon Burks pretty much all game long because Traylon Burks is a fantastic wide receiver, is the lead wide receiver for this Arkansas team, and KJ Jefferson is going to need to take some shots against this Georgia defense, but JT Daniels and company are not going to make this one easy for the Arkansas Razorbacks. I think this one's going to be close. I think it's going to be hard fought. But I think this defensive prowess for Georgia, the standard that they have set on defense, and their offense is starting to come together. Um, again, that game against Clemson never really got anything going. But since then, it's been lights out for this Georgia offense. Granted, the competition hasn't been that great, but I think Georgia's going to be able to get this one done here. My final score prediction is 34 to 24. Um, uh, the, I don't like to use this term, but I think this is a good reality check for Arkansas. Uh, maybe they're not quite ready to be in a top 10 role. A great team in Arkansas nonetheless, but Georgia remains undefeated and gets this one done. Another noon game as the 14th ranked Michigan Wolverines and the Wisconsin Badgers meet in Camp Randall for the big noon game on Fox. And an interesting one at that. I was surprised to see that Wisconsin is actually the two and a half point favorite here with the over and under being 43 and a half. So again, a defensive game expected. My biggest question coming into this game is, is it finally, finally time for Graham Mertz to shine? He has not played well all year, only has had one touchdown through the first three games of this Wisconsin season. And in fact, Wisconsin isn't even scoring 20 points per game, um, an offense that's been pretty lackluster so far. But with that being said, Blake Corum, Hassan Haskins for Michigan, absolutely fantastic. When you look on the other side, Ches Malusi for Wisconsin is great as well. But going back to Corum and Haskins, we saw that they could be stopped last week against Rutgers. And this Badger run defense is so much better than the Rutgers run defense that Michigan faced last week. So will the Badgers be able to stop those duos? That is going to be interesting to watch. That is going to be an interesting side to watch as well. And then turnovers. Michigan has not turned the ball over yet this year. So if Wisconsin can force a turnover in a close game, maybe late in the game, Wisconsin might have a shot to pull off. Well, I'm going to consider an upset because Wisconsin just hasn't played that well on the offensive side of the ball this year. They're going to need to have a good game out of Graham Mertz in order for them to do that. And I just don't think that they're going to be able to get it done. So according to the line, this is an upset. But when you look at the rankings, I think Michigan should win this game. My final score of 23 to 20. Um, I think Wisconsin comes away or not Wisconsin. I think Michigan comes away with a nice win here in Big Ten play to continue their undefeated season and improve to 5-0, and dropping Wisconsin to 1-3. and All right, in my opinion, this is the game of the week right here. Cincinnati and Notre Dame match up for a potential playoff elimination game. I say potential because if Notre Dame loses this one, they might not necessarily be out of it depending on what else happens. Cincinnati, if you lose this one, probably out of the playoff conversation, but are still the front runners to get that group of five spot. Um, for New Year's Six games, right? So Cincinnati are the two-point favorites with the over and under being 50 and a half, 2.30 Eastern time, which is 1.30 Central. You can go down the line, but 2.30 Eastern time on NBC. This is, of course, the NBC game, the time that Notre Dame plays. Um, this is going to be one hell of a game to watch. Let me just tell you that. Both teams coming into this one undefeated. It's another top 10 matchup. This one's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Will Jack Cohn be ready to start? And if not, Drew Pine. We saw Jack Cohn hobble to the sideline in that game against Wisconsin, but Drew Pine came out and played fantastic. It should be Jack Cohn's job. Maybe, again, if he's ready to go and ready to play. Um, I haven't seen anywhere that he's not going to play, but Drew Pine has been said to be named the starter if Jack Cohn uh, is not ready to go for this game here against Cincinnati. And I think that does hurt Notre Dame's chances a little bit because Cone is definitely 100% more experienced than Drew Pine, obviously. But Drew Pine is still not a bad quarterback at all. Watch the running back battle on this one. Jerome Ford has been a machine 
for the Cincinnati Bearcats this year. Six touchdowns on the year, and Kyron Williams has kind of yet to get it going to the extent that a lot of people thought, including myself, that he would this year. But nonetheless, he has the ability to get it going and has the big play machine in him and speedster Chris Tyree still back there for Notre Dame as well. Both of these defenses, though, are ball hawking. So the passing attacks are going to have to be very careful in this one. Lots of picks for Cincinnati, lots of picks for Notre Dame. Uh, Kyle Hamilton has two. Uh, there was another defender last game that got two. Um, a couple more pick sixes for Notre Dame. These defenses love to pick off the ball. So shots are going to have to be taken in this game, but they're going to have to be taken smartly. There's going to be very few openings for the passing attacks here in this game with the way that these defensive secondaries have been playing. So with that all being said, who do I, who do I think is going to win this game? Guys, I think this one's going to be close. Um, I think this one can go either way. I'm really intrigued to see who comes out of this one, but I'm going to give it to Cincinnati. I think this defense is just better. Notre Dame's offensive line has not been playing up to the standard, albeit they had a pretty solid game last week against Wisconsin um, and a pretty solid game against Purdue of the week before. So it, it it's getting there but I don't think it's quite ready to match up against what they're going to see out of Cincinnati. Cincinnati's going to be mixing up looks. They're going to be bringing all sorts of packages at Brian Kelly's Fighting Irish. And I think Cincinnati is going to cement themselves, maybe not into the top five because of the rankings, but Cincinnati's going to solidify themselves as a playoff contender with the win against the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Ole Miss is going to hope to pull off the shocker as they take on number one, Alabama. They find themselves 14 and a half point underdogs with the over and under being almost 80, 79 and a half. This, of course, is the 330 game on CBS. It's a battle of Heisman quarterbacks, Matt Corral versus Bryce Young. Very interesting matchup there at the quarterback position. Uh, Matt Corral seen now as the slight Heisman favorite over Bryce Young. And how could you blame him? Even though Ole Miss has played one fewer game, Matt Corral has looked like an absolute machine. He he is playing out of his mind, outstanding. So is Bryce Young, just through his first interception not too long ago. Um, I previously said he has interception problems, but I probably read something wrong. Um, that, that was a couple weeks ago when they were playing Florida. But um, just Bryce Young can make some dangerous throws at times. But Matt Corral has a lot of weapons around him, as does Bryce Young. Um, but that position battle is going to be really interesting to watch. Defense is going to play a huge role. If you remember last year, it was a shootout back and forth and back and forth, and Alabama finally got a stop, and they held on for the 14-point win. This is going to be the game of last possession, so watch every single possession in the fourth quarter because it's going to be as valuable as gold. Uh, I'm telling you, the possessions in the fourth quarter are going to decide this game, and I think Bama's defense steps up makes the bigger plays late in this game. And I think the Crimson Tide escape here with a win. 45-38 is my final score prediction. But I cannot wait to watch this one. I think we're really going to figure out how good is this Ole Miss defense? How good is Matt Corral? How, how, how ready is this Ole Miss team? I think is what we're going to find out after being so close last year. This year is going to be the chance for Ole Miss to prove themselves. But I think they're going to come up just short. All right, number six, Oklahoma is going to look to end their historical struggles against the Kansas State Wildcats. This has been a team over the past two years. Oklahoma has beaten every other team in the Big 12 except Kansas State. And that is going to have to change here if Oklahoma is going to want to get into the college football playoff. They said it's sixth right now. Pretty solid shot to make it into the playoff if they can win out. But if they can't win this game, there can be a lot worse things to come for this Oklahoma team. 3.30 game on Fox. I'm going to go through this one rather quickly. Oklahoma, 11-point uh, favorites with 52-and-a-half being the over and under. Is this Spencer Rattler's time to surge? Again, hasn't played the best quite yet, but if you remember uh, last year, Spencer Rattler was struggling at the beginning of the season and then really got things clicking as the season went along. And I think this is the turning point game for Spencer Rattler. I think he's going to play a lot better. And when you look at the quarterback for Kansas State, there's no Skylar Thompson. So will it be Will Howard or leave it uh, or Lewis, not leave it, sorry, or Lewis. Um, so Howard uh, hurt last week. So Lewis came in to play a little bit. Um, Howard maybe could be ready to go, but again, uh, remain to be seen yet. And then watch for Deuce Vaughn. 
Deuce Vaughn has kind of struggled in the past couple of games, but I think is still one of the best running backs in the entire country. Watch out for Deuce Vaughn. He is going to be an absolute machine in this game as well. He's going to create some havoc for this Oklahoma defense, but I do think Oklahoma avoids the upset bit. Weird score prediction here, 33-27. I do have Oklahoma winning. I think they finally end their losing streak against the Kansas State Wildcats, improve the 5-0, and save their playoff chances. All right, Florida takes on an undefeated rival in Kentucky. This game for the past half a decade has been very, very interesting to watch. A couple years ago, Kentucky ended their long losing streak against the Florida Gators, and it's been some close battles ever since. And I expect this one to be pretty close as well. This is a 6 p.m. game, Eastern Standard Time on ESPN. Eight is the eight is the line, and Florida is the favorite, with 55 being the over and under. Expect big games from Emory Jones and Will Levis. Both of these quarterbacks have looked pretty solid up until this point, um, and both of them are coming off some great performances. Emory Jones coming off probably the best, per definitely the best performance of the year and definitely the best performance of his career. And then Will Levis coming off kind of a slacking game, but overall this season has played very, very well for the Kentucky Wildcats. Chris Rodriguez has also played very well, but this Gators front is not going to let him get into the second level quite that easy. This Florida Gator front is going to create havoc, not only on Will Levis and the quarterback position, but also on Chris Rodriguez and the ability to run the football. But turnovers have been a problem for both of these teams, especially Kentucky. They rank worse than the nation in turnover margin with minus nine. They've turned the ball over 11 times this season, and I think that's the difference in this game. I think this is a close one. Kentucky's going to battle, but I think they turn the ball over one or two too many times, and it's what helps Florida. Takes a 28-26 win against former undefeated team in Kentucky. I think they're going to go down this week. All right, Baylor and Oklahoma State are going to battle to see who's going to remain undefeated in the Big 12. And guys, I think this is an absolutely huge game here. 7 o'clock game on ESPN2. You got the 21st-ranked Baylor Bears and the 19th-ranked Oklahoma State Cowboys. This should be a lot of fun to watch. Oklahoma State is the three-and-a-half-point favorite, with the over and under being 47-and-a-half. Um, again, some things to watch for here. Can Spencer Sanders build off of last week? Last week was arguably Spencer Sanders' best game of his collegiate career. Um, a great game after coming off a very sloppy game against Boise State, which Oklahoma State was still able to win, but Sanders only had, I believe, 74 passing yards compared to 344 last week with two touchdowns. Was great on the ground as well, two touchdowns rushing as well. So this Oklahoma State team finally has their Spencer Sanders back. Can he continue to play like that? An interesting thing to watch. Um, Ebner and Smith, the two running backs for Baylor, have been astounding this year. I've been really surprised with this Baylor offense as a whole, but especially their rushing attack. I've been really surprised with, with the exit of John Lovett and others. Um, Ebner and Smith have played fantastic for Baylor. And while all the, um, it, and all the injuries for Oklahoma State at the running back position have made way for Jalen Warren, who is really, really good and is playing like it as well. But defense is going to be the key in this one. I know the over and under says 47 and a half, but I think there's a lot of scoring in this one. Both these offenses are playing pretty well. Um, Baylor's ranked top 10 in a lot of categories in the nation. Um, but I think Oklahoma State's defense is the key. I think Oklahoma State's defense steps up, makes some plays, and they win this one. Very, very close game. 31 to 30 is my final score prediction. That's the Cowboys are the team that comes out undefeated from this one. Auburn and LSU are going to hope to get back into the thick of the SEC race. This is the 9 o'clock game on ESPN. 22nd ranked Auburn Tigers are the three and a half point underdogs. And as I said, Tigers, now nah, it's Auburn, right? Um, three and a half point underdogs are the Auburn Tigers, while the LSU Tigers, again, three and a half point favorite. 55 and a half is the over and under. The LSU Tigers, Max Johnson, I feel has improved every single week. Watching him play in the UCLA game, he was kind of the bright spot in that loss, right? To where he had a solid game, just the team around him didn't really have uh, the best of games, especially defensively. Um, but for Max Johnson, he's come on, fit on nicely after Miles Brennan uh, broke his arm. Um, he 
Miles Brennan should be getting back uh, into playing form relatively soon. But for right now, Max Johnson is the guy that you have to rely on for LSU. And he's going against a Tiger defense that, well, has had its struggles, right? We saw that prevalent last week against Georgia State where they had to claw back and fight back just to escape with a win in that game. Um, again, Tigers versus Tigers. It's going to be fun. Um, the Tigers have a pretty good passing attack, but the Tigers passing defense is pretty good. So, <laughs> right, we're going to see what happens here. But, guys, I do think the Tigers are going to win this one. No, I, I'm, I'm just pulling your leg. But I do think LSU is going to pull this one out here. 28-24 is my final score prediction. I think this one's close as well. Um, but the loser of this one, out of playoff conversation, probably out of SEC contention as well, um, especially if it's Auburn. You haven't even played a conference. Well, maybe not Auburn. I think especially if it's LSU, um, you get the one and one there, and you're already a team that's not ranked. Um, so not going to help your case there. Um, I think the winner of this one gets into the poll or stays in the poll in the case of Auburn. Loser of this one drops out, stays unranked. Uh, but more importantly, the winner gets back into the SEC race, and I think that is LSU. And the final game I'm going to be previewing, predicting today, the Arizona State Sun Devils and the 20th-ranked UCLA Bruins are going to hope to take control of the Pac-12 South with a win here in this game. This is a 10-30 game on Fox. Stay up and watch this one. Please do, because I think it's going to be an absolutely fantastic game to watch. There have been a lot of good uh, Pac-12 after dark games to watch this year. Of course, I've already mentioned this one on Fox Sports 1. UCLA is the three-point favorite as they are the ranked team here with the over and under being 55 and a half yet again. Lots of interesting matchups to watch for here. DTR, that's Dorian Thompson Robinson, the quarterback for UCLA versus the Sun Devils secondary. The Sun Devils secondary has looked almost untouchable while DTR, I still feel like, can play better. Uh, this rushing attack as well for both of these teams. Charbonnet and Brooks look tremendous for UCLA, but White and Nagata are White and Ngata are gonna have something to say about that for Arizona State. They've been running the ball extremely well as well. Probably two of the most underrated running back duos in the entire nation. Definitely the two most underrated running back duos in the Pac-12, but possibly the entire nation as well. I think this game is going to be all about building momentum. Which team gets off to the hot start? I think that's going to be the key here in this one. And I think that team is the Arizona State Sun Devils. Yep, guys, that is right. I think Arizona State's going to pull off a slight upset here against the UCLA Bruins. I just like the way the Sun Devils are playing as of right now. And I think especially with this passing defense and the talent that Arizona State has on the defensive line, I think they're going to be able to come into Pasadena. Uh, they're going to be able to give UCLA problems um, with their defense. And then offensively, Jaden Daniels is just a whole lot of problem right there. I think Arizona State is going to do enough to pull off the upset against UCLA. And guys, that's going to do it for my week five predictions. If there was a game on this list that you want to see me talk about and preview a little bit more, leave it in the comment section down below. I know there are a lot of other interesting games out there this week. Again, this is just the top 10 I was most excited for, most impactful. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, do all of that fun stuff. Help support me and my channel. Remember to play hard, but tailgate harder as always. And I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.